You know, when you are living your life and Christ is not in you, it begins to, to have an effect on how you relate with other people. Because true love only comes from God. You know, because God is love. And he says, if you do not love, then you do not even know him. Therefore, when we have a relationship with him, then we begin to know how to relate even with other people. Because true fellowship is done with God and with people. And if God is not part of the fellowship, then that fellowship might experience a lot of problems. Unity anywhere in the church is as a result of God being part of your uh, group, fellowship, community. Hallelujah. And we were created for community because God is three in one. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and God the Father. That's the community. And that has been extended to humanity. Therefore, I cannot do life without you. I need you. And you need me. But we all need Jesus for this relationship to work. Marriage is just something that begins to tell us how the relationship works between God and and the people of God. And the children of God. So he is the groom. And we are the bride. Hallelujah. We were condemned. When we sinned. We were condemned. In our unrighteous state. We stood condemned. In the presence of the Holy God. Hallelujah. But through Jesus Christ who came and redeemed us. Through Jesus Christ who came and died for our sins. And he rose again. And he gave us an opportunity to have a relationship with God. Through reconciliation. We stand justified in the presence of the Holy God. And Romans 8 says there is no more condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus. So if you are in Christ Jesus, do not allow the enemy to condemn you. Do not allow the devil to speak about your past and tell you what you did in your past. Because your past does not count. What counts is your present and your future. And in Christ we are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. We were imprisoned. Sin brings imprisonment. The moment you begin to live a life of sin, you are imprisoned. You live in a prison. Addiction is that one kind of a prison people go through. Addicted to something that is not in the will of the Father. Hallelujah. But the anointing of our Lord Jesus sets us free from that imprisonment. John says, ever the Son sets free, it is free indeed. Hallelujah. And if you are free, shout amen. I am free. I am free. You are free. And the enemy knows it. And he cannot do anything about it. Hallelujah. We were deprived. Sin corrupted our whole being. And left us in a very helpless situation. Where we could not do anything to remedy our situation. None of us has the power of our, our situations. Do you know there are times that we try hard to change things but we don't have power to change things because the only one who can change things on our lives is God himself. You know I hear a lot of people say this you know what I'll start going to church because Christians are hypocrites they go to church and they sin a lot I'll start going to church when I stop sinning. 
you can't stop sinning until Christ begins to reign in your life. Because you don't have the power to stop that. We are prisoners. We have been imprisoned. We try hard, but we fail. We try to love, but we fail. We try to come to change. We fail. But when God begins to reign in our lives, when we allow the Holy Spirit to begin to work in our lives, what we couldn't do, we begin to do. Because it's only him who has the power to remedy our difficult situations. We also encountered death. We died. Adam and Eve they died. Because they were told the moment you do this you will die. And they died. Spiritual death. And many people even up to now they are dead. Hallelujah. And somebody needed to undo the consequences of Adam's sin. Someone needed to do this. Romans 5.12 says, Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, so death spread to all people, no one being able to stop it or escape its power, because they all sinned. Through Adam, we all sinned. We all sinned. Hallelujah. We all sinned. So death spread to all people. You and me today. We became part of this death. No one being able to stop it. Or escape its power. Because we all sinned. So the prophetic voices. All that time. When they knew that Israel. Through Adam. We are sinners. You and me through Adam are sinners and we are dead. The prophetic voice of that time began to prepare the people so that the people would be ready for the coming of Jesus Christ. Because Christ was going to restore us back to God. Hallelujah. I don't know if the church today is doing what the prophets did that time. The prophets in those days realized that you know what? We have a duty. And our duty is to prepare every man for the coming of Jesus Christ. So that when salvation comes, none will miss salvation. Now Jesus came. What is the church doing today? What is our message? What is our prophetic message? What is it that we have to do? Romans 5.17 says, For if by the trespass of the one Adam death reigned through one Adam, much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in eternal life through the one Jesus Christ. So through Christ we have been redeemed. Therefore we cannot talk about the coming of Jesus in human form without talking about why he came. A lot of people we are celebrating this December and we are saying on the 25th we're going to celebrate the birth of Jesus. But can I tell you what? We celebrate sometimes what we do not know. And we argue things sometimes that we don't need to argue about. We begin to say, you know what? I don't celebrate Christmas because he was not born on the 25th. There's no problem. It doesn't matter when he was born. Because for you, the, the, the birth of Jesus is in the past. So it's not important. What is important is that he was born. What is important is for you to know the coming deaths. 
If you know the day when Jesus is coming back, but I'm sorry for you because he said nobody knows the time. And because we do not know, we just have to be ready for the coming of Jesus Christ. But what we all know, it is important to understand that Jesus was born. And he was born for a purpose. And that purpose was to restore me back unto my father. So that I could be reconciled back to Jesus Christ. So that a second coming, whether I know the day or I don't know the day. But when that day comes, I will be ready for that day. Hallelujah. So every time Christmas comes, let us help people to know why he came. So that we do not make the same mistake they made when Jesus Christ came. Hallelujah. The sad truth. Can I speak about the sad truth? How many of you are ready for the sad truth? Let's go to Luke chapter 19, 43. This is the sad truth. And uh, this is the sad truth about Christianity today. Because sometimes we forget the real deal. There is nothing wrong preaching prosperity as having things and you know. But it's all about having and amazing wealthy. Getting wealthy and getting wealthy and getting wealthy. We leave the most important things. We don't talk about the most important things. The Bible says, seek your face the kingdom of God. And all these things shall be added unto you. And when they say all, it means even physical things, possessions, money, houses, and whatever things that you can talk about. These are not things to talk about. What we need to seek is God's kingdom. What we need to seek is Christ himself in our lives. Because when he begins to reign in our lives, can I tell you this? If I called you and said, let's go to Dubai, and the bill is on me, it means don't worry. It means don't worry. Whatever you need, I'm going to get it for you. And the, the beauty about having Christ on your side is that the bill, your, your bill is on him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, if you want to tweet that one, you can tweet that one. That your bill, your bill is on Christ. Your bill is on Christ. I don't care anymore because when I seek his kingdom, I know that all things shall be added unto me. My bill is on Jesus. But the sad truth is, for a time is coming upon you. When your enemies will throw up a bank with pointed stacks about you and surround you and shut you in on every side and they will dash you down to the ground. You, Jerusalem, and your children within you. And they will leave no, and they will not leave in you one stone upon another. All because Oh, because, oh, because, somebody say, oh, because, oh, because, somebody say, oh, because, oh, because you did not come progressively to recognize and know and understand from observation and experience the time of your visitation. That is the sad truth. This is the sad truth that happens even in church today. When God moves, the Holy Spirit moves. Somebody is struggling and has been struggling and struggling. And the prayer has been, God touch me, God touch me. But when the Holy Spirit is moving, people are not sensitive. People cannot descend the presence of the Holy Spirit. As he moves, when God is visiting, he passes by. And the writer of a song said, pass me not, O gentle Savior. But we leave the Savior to pass us by. And we go back home the same. And we say when we reach home, I have been going to church. But I believe the pastor in that church is, on, is not anointed. You don't need my anointing. You need the presence of God when he passes by. You don't need me because I am not God. 
God is God. The Holy Spirit is here. Be sensitive even when he passes by. Hallelujah. We hear the message. He passes by. He is in our midst. But the sad truth is that when God passes by, when he passes by, hallelujah, we are browsing on our phones. When he passes by, we are looking at somebody else. When he passes by, we are daydreaming. When he passes by, we are thinking about every problem that we have. They, they did not recognize and know and understand from observation and experience the time of their visitation. That is when God was visiting you. The time in which God showed himself gracious toward you and offered you salvation through Christ. Can I tell you this? God is always ready to come through for his children. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. You who's listening to me right now on this uh, online platform, I don't know which one you, you're hearing from. I want to tell you that God is concerned. God knows your name. God is concerned about you. And he doesn't want to pass you by. But be sensitive whenever he comes through. Because he's ready to touch your life. He shows up. He shows up. Time or season may mean the perfect time. The proper time, the right time, the seasoned time. There is time for everything. Do not miss your God-given time. There is time for you when you must experience certain things. You may cry for some things and if it's not yet God's time, they may not happen. But when the time has come, you know, the Bible is full of the word at the appointed time, in the fullness of time. And I pray, Lord, that when the fullness time has come for me to receive what you have for me, I need to be ready, God Almighty. I need to be sensitive because I don't want to miss that time. And I know that God is doing greater things even in this time. We are looking at the COVID situation. We always look at what we can see, but we don't see what we can't see. Because God sometimes works behind the closed door and does everything and finishes everything. Because he is the Alpha and the Omega. He begins and he finishes before he brings it out to you for you to begin to experience it. And God is doing something in your life you may not know about it you may not been you may not have been told about it but God is doing something that you are not even aware of right now and at the right time God is going to surprise you in the fullness of time it shall come to pass visitation the time for which this visitation they're talking about here that Christ was talking about here is the time for which God in his mercy and grace had offered salvation through Christ to them. Christ came. And do you know what? They didn't know him. Now, can I give you a few things before we end this morning? I only got a few minutes to go and we'll be done. Hallelujah. Now, why did they miss when he came. And why are we missing things today? Why is it that sometimes we fail to see what God is doing? This is the thing. They did not keep in step with God's prophetic word. They did not keep in step with God's prophetic word. The prophets spoke accurately. I spoke about the prophets prophesying to prepare God's people for the coming of Messiah. 
So they spoke accurately about the coming of Jesus. And if you read the Bible today in the Old Testament, you will find these prophecies. Many of us sometimes receive prophecies that are coming from God. Not every prophet, because the Bible says tests. You know, some prophets are not from God. But of course, there are things that people have confirmed. You heard it in your spirit. God spoke to you. And then other people have confirmed. And you are very much aware that God is going to do this to me. But what do you do? You don't keep up. Instead, it's what God has said. The best way to keep up with what God is saying to you is number one, write it down. If you think you're going to forget, write it down. That's what God told Habakkuk. He said, write it down upon the tables. Write it down. So that when you read, somebody reads, they run with it. Write it down. Because the only way you're going to run with it is every time you read, then you are reminded of what is about to come. Keep praying about it. Keep praying about it. Keep praying about it. Begin to cultivate a lifestyle in expectation for what God is about to do. Hallelujah. These people did not keep up in step with the revealed word of God. That is why in our time today we need to read scriptures. We need to pray and ask God to reveal his word to us. Every time. Because when you are reading and asking God, what do you mean here? What are you talking about here? You will come to understand that there are certain ways that have been spoken in the Bible as prophetic words. That have not yet come to pass, but they will come to pass. And the very moment you begin to see the signs, then you can tell that I think this is it. I think this is it. They should have read the Bible. They should have been, they should have kept in, in touch with, with every prophetic word. Because there are words that Jeremiah, for instance, spoke about when he saw the lamentations in Rama. Is it Rama? And all those things, you could hear them and you could say, oh yes, the children are being killed and it must have to do with the Savior. It must have to do with the Savior. Because Jeremiah spoke about this. Or this one spoke about Egypt. That one spoke about the stars or whatever it is. Then you can easily tell the times and seasons in which you are living in. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 20 says, Do not scorn or reject gifts of prophecy or prophecies spoken, revelations, words of instructions or exhortation or warning. Do not reject them. Be careful. Not everything is coming from the devil. Don't bind everything. I bind you devil. I bind you devil. That says the Lord, I bind you devil. You see spirits in everything. Demons in everything. Be careful. You are a child of God. Go to God. Pray about it. Ask him. Let him reveal that to you. Number two, they did not know him. Do you know that you can be waiting for someone and he comes in, but because you don't know him, you don't recognize him or discern who he is and you miss the very opportunity of enjoying being with him? They walk in. They sit on the other table and you sit on the other table and you begin saying, I'm waiting for James to come. I'm waiting for James and you're looking at your watch and James is seated. After two hours, James leaves. You gotta know who you're waiting for. You gotta know who you're waiting for. Ask them for a picture. So they might need your picture, but they couldn't ask the picture of Jesus. Definitely, it wasn't easy. So how do we get to know him? Hallelujah. Through his word. Hallelujah. Because the best way you can get the picture 
of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. You got to read about him in the word. Hallelujah. They did not think the Messiah would come in the form of man. Up until now, some people do not believe that the Messiah came in the form of man. They are still waiting for Jesus to come. Are you waiting for Jesus to come? I realize there is a scripture in the Bible. Do you know that uh, John the Baptist, when he was in jail, was in prison and about to be killed, beheaded? And, uh, you know, you are in trouble, but you know that Jesus is there, the Savior. Definitely your mindset will be like, he's going to come and save me from this. Right? But, but that doesn't happen. So John sends his disciples to Jesus. And he says, is it you or are we waiting for another? And a lot of us today, we are still saying, is it you or we are waiting for another? And we always argue logically. Bring out certain logical things and say, you know, God, the way I read about him and the way I've heard about him, this doesn't seem to be the God I know. If he is the God that you speak about, why did so much people die? Why did he do? Uh, you are waiting for another. So definitely we have John the Baptist and he's about to be beheaded and he expects Jesus to come through for him. But that doesn't happen. And there are things we cannot answer. Therefore, let's stop trying to be more logical and allow the Spirit of God to overtake us and walk with us in his own way and in his own wisdom. Number three, they did not honor him. They did not honor him. So he visited, but they did not know. They did not recognize they did not honor him. Anything you do not honor, you cannot benefit from it. Anything you do not honor, you cannot benefit from it. If you want to tweet that one, go right ahead. In Luke 4, when Jesus taught, they were in awe and were wondering about the ways of grace which were coming from his lips. And they were saying, is this not Joseph's son? They're not looking at him as Jesus, the Messiah. They are saying, is this not Joseph's son? They did not honor him. Is this not Joseph's son? Look at what Jesus said. I tell you the truth. No prophet is accepted in his own hometown. And the Bible reports that he could not do miracles in there. There are people that God has touched. There are people that God can use so mightily in your life. But because you see nothing in them, God will not use them. There are times the Holy Spirit can move. Times of visitation. In our midst. But because we do not honor. He doesn't do nothing. He comes. And he goes. He comes. And he goes. But other people are very sensitive. They don't sit back. They say. Do not pass me by. Do not Pass me by. Hallelujah. I give myself away. Do not pass me by. I need you. I need you every hour. Do not pass me by. Hallelujah. Number four. They did not pray and seek God. When Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God, Jesus replied, you are blessed. Simon, son of John, because my father in heaven has revealed this to you. 
You did not learn this from any human being. Can I have the guys here? There are things, ladies and gentlemen, that you will not know until God decides to reveal them to you through prayer and his word. Hallelujah. Do you know that even Peter and the disciples, they were walking with Jesus until this day he decides to say, who do you say I am? Now he wants to know if they know him so that they cannot miss their times of visitation. Your time of visitation is a time when you really, really need to be sensitive. It's a time when you need to pray and seek God so that you don't miss that opportunity. There are things, ladies and gentlemen, that you will not know until God decides to reveal them to you through prayer and His Word. And if all we do is play church instead of praying, there are things we'll never come to know. There are things we will never come to know. There are things that will never be revealed to us. But when we are in that place where we humble ourselves and we pray and we turn against all our wicked ways and we say, Lord, I am here. Reveal yourself. Tell me something. The Lord will reveal it to you. Like it was with Peter. And Christ said. Flesh and blood. Has not revealed this to you. Flesh and blood. Has not revealed this to you. We are living in a time when we must pray and seek God. This is the time. This is the season. This is the period when we need to seek God. Christmas period is not just about celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. But it's a time to seek him more. It is a time to want to know him more. It's a time to call upon him, him and his name. Sometimes to see God move so mightily in our lives, churches and communities, we must learn to seek and pray. They did not know their time of visitation. And today God has extended this to us through the Holy Spirit. Because when he left, he said, I will send another. And he spoke about Paraclete, the Holy Ghost. And we have been given that opportunity as well. Are we going to miss that opportunity? Are we going to miss that opportunity? We don't need to miss the opportunity. 2 Corinthians, Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2 says, At the acceptable time, the time of grace, I listened to you and I helped you on the day of salvation. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. It's the day for our salvation. And I will call Gillan just to come and wrap it up as he leads some of you people to Jesus Christ. But if you've got any prayer requests, please get in touch with us. We're going to pray with you. And next week, let's come expecting, invite somebody because we are dealing with the times of visitation. And our prayer is that every time we are in the presence of God, we must come out of that place or church service knowing that the Lord is with us. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Come on, everyone. Let's give God the glory for that wonderful word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You know, when you hear a word like that, and you just think about it, and you go, I, I, I want to be the person that responds to that word. Because he visited me. And you know, when you're visited by the best, you just say, you're welcome. You're welcome. So, you know, if you are listening and watching, maybe you 
online and you're just thinking, I need Jesus in my life. I need to welcome him in my life. This is your opportunity. And, you know, we, we're going to sing a song. But before we do that, if, if that's you, you're thinking, I need Jesus. I need to welcome Jesus into my life. Today is the day of salvation as we heard. Amen. So I'm going to pray a prayer. I'm going to lead you in a prayer to just make Jesus the Lord of your life. Amen. And so, church and everyone, let's just, you know, pray this prayer together as we help our friends who are desiring Jesus in their life. Come on, let's pray. Oh, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for the perfect gift of life. And today I respond to that. I ask you to come into my heart. Be the Lord and the Savior of my life. Thank you for your forgiveness and your mercy. Thank you that I'm a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much for responding to God's word. And if you want to just let us know of that great decision so we can do life with you, we'll be excited to do that. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. So, church, um, we're just so excited that, you know, um, this, this festive season, we're going to be having wonderful um, Christmas uh, services and, and, and carols. So feel free to invite your friends. You know, uh, this, this Sunday that's coming, we'll be uh, just enjoying.